Hey guys, it's Paul from Online Tax Academy, and in today's lesson we're doing a chromatic scale workout. So before we get started, you should get yourself the free PDF that accompanies this lesson so you can follow along with all the examples and join in. And the link to that is down below at onlinesaxacademy.com. And premium members can get the performance track and backing track. A chromatic scale is basically all the notes between a certain range. So for example, we could take a chromatic scale starting on G, and if we go up an octave, we're gonna play through 12 different notes before we hit high G. Now these are great to practice for a number of reasons. They're really good to warm up with because you're literally going through all the notes. And it's good for your fingers as well. Now it's rare in a piece of music that you'll get a full, say one octave chromatic scale, but you'll very often get little what are called chromatic runs and chromatic passing notes. And these come up in all styles of music, but especially jazz. Now by the end of the exercise, you're gonna be doing a full run on the sax from the very lowest note on the sax all the way up to the highest. But we're gonna start in the middle of the sax and we're gonna take a G chromatic scale and break it into three sections. And in each of these sections, there are certain aspects of your fingering that you should pay attention to. So looking at the first four notes, one thing to watch out for is when you get to the note A sharp or B flat, we're gonna play that note by playing an A at the top and then your bottom side key here. And this is the most efficient fingering for this section. As I'm sure you know, you can play A sharp or B flat with the bis key by moving your first finger down and covering both of those keys. But here it's best to use the side key so you don't have to slide your bis key off like that. So have a go at playing along with this section of the workout going from G to B. Now when we do the full workout, you'll see how that section is repeated with eighth notes and then with 16th notes. All right, so moving on to the second section, we're gonna go from a B up to a D sharp or E flat. Now here, there's an alternative way to play C natural. And we do this by holding our B finger down and pushing in the second side key. So this is the middle one of the three. And I just like to use the side of my first finger like this. Now this does help create a smoother sound because we're not switching fingers here, but instead we're just pushing this in. And that eliminates any chance of like a little C sharp popping out between our B as we change to the C. Now it's definitely true that this fingering is certainly more efficient and it certainly creates a smoother sound. But with that gain in efficiency, you do lose a little bit of flexibility. Now what I mean by that is if you're playing a set piece of music where it's never going to change and you're going to be doing this certain chromatic run every time in the same way, then get used to using these side keys for the most efficient fingering. But if you're more of an improviser, it's good to get used to doing the normal fingering in a smooth way as well. Because when you go to a normal C fingering, that is a bit more flexible because we're not moving our hand out of position here. It becomes tricky to get down to a D afterwards when your hand has been raised up to get that middle side key. Whereas when you're playing the C normally, going to that D is no problem. Now it's good to be comfortable playing with both of these fingerings. One for the really efficient and smooth way and one for the more flexible way that allows you to move to other notes more freely. And of course you can decide for yourself which one is best for you. All right, so we'll try that section of the workout now and try using that side key, see how it feels. All right, moving on to the last section, we're gonna go from that D sharp or E flat up to the high G. Now here again, there's another place where we can use an alternative fingering, and that's to use this side F sharp key here. And this is normally an oval shaped key located just behind your second finger. And the way we would use this in this part is we would have E flat, E, F, and then I push this down for the F sharp, and then release both for the G. Now exactly the same principle as with that side C finger, it's definitely a more efficient fingering for set pieces of work. But again, you are gonna lose some flexibility, especially with this one, as your finger is all the way back here and it's quite tricky to get to a D afterwards. But definitely give it a try and it is a really useful fingering to know. So here's that section of the workout. Okay, so next up in the workout, you'll see we'll go up and down a full one octave from G to high G. Now 
After that, we're now gonna expand the range. So we're gonna focus on the lower end of the saxophone now. So we're gonna go from a low D all the way down to a low B flat, which involves using these table keys here at the side. Now you'll see the fingering diagrams to help you place your fingers if you're not sure with these lower notes. And don't be surprised if this is your first time playing these lower notes that they sound quite squeaky. Normally people have a bit too much tension in their embouchure. So you want to relax your embouchure. Imagine like you were yawning to help open up everything and blow with a good steady stream of air. And that's gonna help those low notes come out. So there's no alternative fingerings here. So here's that section of the workout. Now to finish off, we're now gonna go up to the higher notes on the sax. So we're gonna go from our first palm key note D all the way to the note F sharp. Now there are some alternative fingerings for the note E, F and F sharp. I personally prefer to use these alternative fingerings as it allows much easier access to get up into the altissimo range. But of course you can use the standard fingerings as well. So these alternative fingerings are for the high E, instead of having the two palm keys and our top side key here, which is the standard high E fingering, we're actually gonna put down fingers two and three on the front. And then this first finger is gonna move up to the front F key. For the high F, instead of having all three palm keys and that top side key here, you put down just your C finger, the second finger, and your first finger on the front F key. Now for the high F sharp, instead of having all three palm keys, the top side key and the high F sharp key on here, we're gonna put our fingers like we did before with the front F key on and second finger down, and then you can put on your side A sharp key here. All right, so let's try playing this portion of the chromatic scale from high D to F sharp. All right, so that's all the preparation. What follows now is the full workout. Now I'm gonna be demonstrating this on alto sax. So if you're a tenor sax player, you can get the transposed version and that's for premium members at onlinesaxacademy.com.
So don't forget to get the free PDF of this workout that's available at onlinesatsacademy.com. Just click the link below. And whilst you're there, do check out the memberships page where you can see everything that's on offer. When you become a premium member, you have access to all the content on the site, including all the premium content in the YouTube library, all of the lessons on the courses page, and all of the resources in the shed. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to hit subscribe so you don't miss out on future lessons, and I'll see you guys next week.